Over there, no cars. Is that straight? No. We're gonna have to take it. Flaps. They're all the way down. Oh, we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. I've got it. We'll land over that it. guy. That guy. See that guy? We'll stall it. We're gonna do it right here. We're gonna do it. We're gonna put it down. Here we go. What's the cause? Pilot error. Ran out of fuel. Details, details. Oh, Catherine called. Catherine. Catherine Parmel? Yeah. What'd she want? She didn't say. Are you still seeing each other? No. No, she moved to Atlanta. What'd she say? Well, she wanted to know if you're going to be home this weekend. And you said? You're seeing her. No, I am not seeing her. What'd you tell her? I told her that I thought you'd be around. So do you want me to go back to Des Moines and finish this up? Uh, no. Just get a statement from the maintenance crew and close it. Need that file by next week. How do you run out of fuel? Karen, Max. Here we go. American 3721, fly heading 090. Vectors for traffic, expect direct Buckeye. Who needs caffeine? Yeah, coffee run. Where's the rookie? I got him right here. Uh, black sugar tea, low fat. Uh, don't tell me. Oh, man, you uh, want to work the busiest airspace in the country and you can't take a coffee order? Non fat, extra sugar. Nice guess. Uh, you're regular. Decaf. You're going the wrong way, Jack. I need 15. I can't handle 10 miles spacing. I got severe turbulence into Chicago. We need to be slowing traffic down, not speeding it up. All right, fine. DC Central Flows ordered 10 mile spacing. 10. Frank, we're backed up as it is. I got to pull some of these guys off soon. Just do it. Where the hell is Drake? Hell, you know the rules. Henry, you suck. Come on, we need you out on the floor. Apparently you've forgotten. Once again, we have a union contract. Henry, do not give me grief today, all right? Let's go. Breaks over in uh, one minute and 40 seconds. Look, I don't make the rules. Just get on the floor and do your job. Hey, rookie. What's going on? Still being hazed? No, not too bad. See, they can't fire me. You know why? Uh, no, man, I don't know. I'm just, I'm trying to keep the order straight. I know too much. Uh, black sugar, not fat, half and half, regular. November 6th, we pop a traffic 11 American about eight miles opposite the direction. Flight level Chicago International approaching. One, two, three, Karen, eight, I got something eight, for you. See you. I haven't even finished the last one, Henry. But this is great. It's about this computer system that wakes up one morning not only alive and a conscious being, right, mm -hmm. but so independent that it rebels against the human masters here on Earth. Henry, I want to escape. We'll escape together. <sighs> How many flights a day did you have in training? About 150. Now you got almost 8,000. Watch me, I'm going to make a sandwich here. Put this guy to 23, move this guy to 21, and squeeze this guy in at 22. A lot of people in that sandwich. American 434, amend altitude, maintain flight level 210. Come on. United 377, descend, maintain flight level 230. Tri-State 602, climb, maintain flight level 220. Expedite climb, report reaching. I told you, man, you cannot think in this job. Tri-State 602, reduce speed to 280. Start thinking about passengers, you will hesitate. If you hesitate, you're going down. Good evening, Global 1025. Good evening, Midwest. Football update, Bears 24, Vikings 12. Just thought you might be interested, you know, not having a team of your own and all. At least we don't have the Cubs. Is that right? Bunch of losers. Hand off Global 1025. I got him. Global 1025, contact Midwest Center on 118.55. Have a nice night. Midwest Center, Global 1025, checking out flight level 260. Global 1025, Midwest Center, traffic 11 o'clock, 30 miles, opposite direction. You have a business jet at flight level 240. Expect descent clearance in four minutes. Global 1025, looking. 
Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're beginning our initial descent into the Chicago area. Local time is 6.10. We should be on the ground in about 15 minutes. I have a military F-18. Flight level 350 looking to borrow some of your airspace. Can you handle it? PDO 342, climb and maintain flight level 280. Waiting on the F-18 any day now. I heard you. All right, give me the F-18, put it with 31. It's the only altitude I got left. Vandy 81, climb and maintain flight level 31. Two traffic, 10 o'clock, five miles turning north eastbound out of flight level 280 to flight level 310. American 853, Amanda Altitude, descending. What's that? Did your screen just black out? Must be you, Henry. I would like an unsatisfactory condition report again. You lose it, Hank? You going down, my friend? My screen blacked out. You just get this bad out. Yeah, I know. It's all it's very, very funny. Yeah, it's hysterical. Ha, ha, ha. Well, Henry, you want to shut up for a minute and move your guy, please? Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're experiencing some right, moderate turbulence. We ask that you remain in your seats with your seatbelts fastened. Center, we're having moderate to worse turbulence. Request climb to flight level 310. Negative global 1025, you have an F-18 at flight level 310. We gotta get out of this. Center, 1025, request descent out of flight level 260 for 210. Negative global 1025, do not descend. Opposite direction traffic, stand by. PDO Cargo 342, Midwest Center, how do you hear me? Where the hell are you? PDO 342, Center. Traffic, traffic, traffic. Center, we have traffic, zero visibility. You have traffic for us? Traffic. Mommy! You wait for mommy here, honey. Oh, no, no, I'm gonna bring her back to her seat. You need to take your seat as well, okay? Okay. Mommy! She's gonna come right back, honey, okay? Global 1025, maintain 260. Henry, when are you gonna move this guy? Where? I got an F-18 above, I got a business jet below? Turn global or do something, because you got the PDO at 26. What? What are, you, what are you talking about? You got about 10 seconds to make a call here. Get Williams! I don't see the PDO! Karen, watch my traffic. Traffic, descend. What the hell are they waiting traffic. for? Center, descent. we have traffic somewhere. No. Tick traffic. is telling us to descent. descent. Negative 1025, do not descend. Henry, Maintain flight level Henry, 260. Henry, move the global. Turn the global or move the PDO. Do something. I don't see it. Where's the PDO? I don't see the PDO. Where is it? Right there. You don't see that? I didn't see it. Global 1025, descend immediately. <laughs> Traffic alert, descent immediately, flight level 210. Noble 1025, acknowledge. Noble 1025, acknowledge. You got PDO? PDO 342, Noble 1025, acknowledge. Noble 1025, acknowledge. PDO 342, Midwest Center. PDO 342, Midwest Center. Global PDO acknowledge. 342, Midwest Center. Global acknowledge. Global acknowledge. <laughs> Five, acknowledge. Midwest Center. They're in the coast track. Karen, I need to sign in an area. Mafia, take his traffic. November 7, Kilo Victor. This is Midwest Center requesting a visual at your 8 o'clock at 10 miles. Do you see anything? Global 1025, Midwest Center. This is Midwest Center. Do you copy? Global 1025, Midwest Center. Do you copy? PDO 342. Global 1025, Midwest Center, over. Global 1025, Midwest Center, do you copy? Mr. Wyatt, I'm going to take Henry to a hotel. Get him away from the press. They're already outside the facility. Take Henry into the conference room. I'll arrange transportation later. Get a statement. Henry, it's okay. You don't have to do this now. I'll help you with it later, okay? Okay. Okay. I gotta go call my kids. Okay. Don't go, Karen. Don't I'm leave me, Karen. Leave, I'm not going to leave you. I just 
just have to go call my kids, okay? Okay. Okay. Karen, what happened to the plane? Why won't anybody tell me what happened to the planes? Oh, God, no. Oh, God, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, God, no. Get a large building or factory as close to the site as possible. Use it as a temporary morgue. Move bodies only. Don't touch the wreckage till I say so. What? Yeah, it could be an air traffic control problem. Make sure the controller at Midwest is secure. Get his name, his statement, have the FAA test him for drugs and alcohol. I'll check in later. Who's missing? Kim Garfield. I spoke to her a half hour ago. She was at a conference in New York. She'll meet us in Chicago. Does she know this is my case? She does now. <laughs> she wasn't too happy about it. Oh, that's just too bad, isn't it? This way. Uh, I'll meet you on board. I, I don't want to see this. All right. So follow me and I'll take you up. All right, we think the left wing clipped the top of these tall trees here. And we've got the main impact area here. Find the tail section, wherever the hell that is, get the black box. We'll start over here with the cockpit first. Mr. Dantley. Yeah. Yeah, Stephen Royer, FAA Regional Director. Hello. Look, I know you hide. I know you people at NTSB don't like to speculate, but it's been six hours since this crash occurred. Nobody's talked to the press. We don't speculate. But we got rumors on the internet the mayor has publicly condemned the air traffic control hey, system. We don't speculate. I'm not asking you to do that, but two planes flying into each other is not supposed to happen. Now, there are a lot of people out there that are very nervous. I just need some reassurance. Come okay. here. Hey, I'll tell you what. If you want to reassure somebody, why don't you go and talk to some of the families of the victims, OK? Now, what I'm here for. Let me work with them. We don't work for the airlines. Said, we don't work for the FAA. Hey, hey, everyone's got an agenda right now. Let's just be clear about what ours is, all right? Canadian just arrived at International. Here's the passenger list for Global. How many on board? 182 on Global, three on PDO. Oh, uh, when you're ready, we can check out the, uh, the cockpit. John, you all right? Something wrong? Catherine was on this flight. Catherine? Catherine Parmel? Are you sure? I, I, I just I just spoke to her this morning. interviewed the controller at Midwest yet, but we're looking into the possibility that there may have been a miscommunication between him and the pilot. It's up to you if you want to release that to the press. Right now, our priority is the recovery of the bodies of the victims. Do we expect any survivors? It would be a miracle. 
Kim will brief you daily. All right, it's uh, very late. I think we should all try and get some sleep. Excuse me, sir. I, uh, I need to disclose something to you. I knew one of the victims of this crash, a flight attendant. John, I'm sorry. Why didn't you say something? Was she a close friend? Yeah. She was someone I was seeing in D.C., but we'd stopped seeing each other well over a year and a half ago. I think you should recuse yourself. I agree. Kim can take over. She's a not. senior I'd, investigator. I'd like to go back on. to D.C. I can handle the investigation, sir. I don't believe that my having known this woman will in any way interfere with my ability to do my job. You don't think it poses a conflict? No, sir, I do not. Oh, come on, It's John. not a conflict for me. And frankly, I don't think that anyone else even has to know about it. The last thing that we need is the appearance that this investigation's been compromised. Give me a little credit, will the you? The appearance, John. Okay, 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 look, you can stay on, but if it becomes a conflict, professionally, emotionally, I want you to recuse yourself. I will. I'm gonna trust you on this. It won't be a conflict, sir. Thank you. I promise you. Hi, Lori, it's John Danley. I, I don't know if you know this or not, but, but Catherine was on flight 1025. I know. I, I just wanted to tell you how sorry I was. I can't, I can't talk to you right now, John. Yeah, Lori, do you know what she was doing on a flight to DC? I'm sorry, I have to go. Wait, Lori. After being brought to an undisclosed hotel last night, air traffic controller Henry Drake arrived home early this morning under the watchful eye of news The controller's name is Henry Drake. Neighbors describe him as a quiet, introspective man who keeps to himself. Even his next-door neighbor didn't know his name. He's 46 years old, unmarried, a mechanical engineering graduate Electrical of engineering. University. Right now, he's inside his house. Hey, oh, Look, people are getting it all wrong. No, I have to call this specifically that I cannot talk to anybody. You all talk to one. Global had turbulence in the area, but weather doesn't seem to be a factor. Our priority is radar and voice communication between the pilots and air traffic control. Here's what I want. Controller tapes from the facility, cockpit voice recorder, and a flight data recorder. Also, find out if that cargo plane had a collision avoidance system on board. Why wouldn't it? Not an FAA requirement. Kim, I want to look at all the medical and training records on that controller. Interview his friends, family, other controllers working with him at the time, anyone. We'll meet here every morning at 8 a.m. sharp for updates. No one speaks to the press. Understood? All right. That's it. Just remember why we're all here. We might actually learn something from all this. Thank you. John, about last night, I apologize, but I had to call it the way I saw it. I understand. Do we know where the controller is? Right behind you. I cannot talk about that. I cannot explain that to you. I cannot talk to you. First of all, I'm 48, right? I'm not 46. And second of all, it's an electrical engineering degree, not a mechanical engineering degree. I spoke degree. to one of the FAA soups off the record about this guy. Management's been trying to fire him for the last five years. Why? Personality conflicts. He files complaints compulsively. About what? Equipment malfunctions, union grievances. According to them, he looks for problems. This could be a very short investigation. There's the host computer, there's the CDC, and there's the direct access radar. Can we radar. talk to you inside your house? No, you can't. Contact Come Frank Wyatt. He's a facility manager at Midwest. I want him to work with us on this. Don't you think the facility manager might have an agenda here, John? No, not him. He's an old friend. Frank, good to see you. It's been a long time, John. I'm honored that you brought me in on the investigation. No one else knows the facility better than you do. Well, it's a sure turned us upside down. 22 years, not one black mark. Wait a minute, Henry. Mark. How many planes were you in communication with at the time of the accident? Um, ten. And how long had you been on your scope? About two hours and 35 minutes. I wish I could hear what the hell he was saying in there. He's saying I worked him overtime yesterday. Him and ten other guys. 
Drake is not ten other guys. He's gonna blame me. And I handed him off too many planes. He could say anything he wants to. Truth is, he screwed up, right? Yes, he did. Guys, we don't know that. Karen, I saw that cargo jet on my screen, and I saw it on his screen, okay? You saw it, right? No, oh, I don't know, man. Don't say you don't know. We gotta get the story straight. Well, I'm just a trainee. No, no, you were there. I think you should go to the shrink. Shrink? This got nothing to do with the shrink. This is about what you saw. Now, what I saw were two planes on a collision course that Drake did not separate in time. When did you first encounter the PDO? PDO was westbound at 21,000 feet and requested permission to climb to 28,000. Didn't you see the PDO climbing into Global at 26,000 feet? When I climbed PDO, Global was not a factor. I had sufficient separation. Obviously, I didn't see PDO climbing at Global. Why not? PDO data block disappeared from my screen. Why did you take... Excuse me, what do you mean it disappeared? Before the collision, I had a glitch. I had a blackout on my screen. After the blackout, the data block vanished. So you're telling us you never even saw the PDO at 26,000 feet? The data block came back on my screen just before the collision. How long was your screen blacked out? Oh, two, maybe three seconds. And did the outage occur in the entire facility? Uh, I have no way of knowing that. According to the preliminary report, there was no blackout reported. Did the supervisor see it? I haven't spoken to the supervisor. Did you alert your supervisor? I requested an unsatisfactory condition report. But to your knowledge, he didn't see it happen? Did anyone see it? I'm telling you, I had a blackout on my screen. I, I tried to establish radio contact with the PDO, but I didn't see it. You didn't see it or it wasn't there? It wasn't there. All right, let's go back to the instructions that you gave 1025, if I may. Please. TCAS, the pilot's onboard warning device, indicated conflicting traffic to 1025 and instructed the pilot to descend, but you denied his request and told him to maintain altitudes, correct? I had other traffic. I didn't know where the PDO jet was. Why would you climb PDO from 21 to 28 when you had a 757 to 26? I have warned this facility about the substandard equipment we have. I have warned this facility about deficiencies in the system. Radar blackouts, communication outages. I've telephoned the FAA administrator's hotline. I've filed two unsatisfactory condition reports in the last two months on the very same scope I was using. Answer his question, Henry. Why'd you climb PDO from 21,000 feet to 28,000 feet when you had a 757 at 26? I told you the global was not a factor. I could see both of those planes. So you became confused when PDO, as you alleged, disappeared. No, yes, I, yeah, I was confused. No, see, what do you mean alleged? You're putting words in my mouth now. I don't allege anything. The system according is unsafe. Data we have, Henry, according to the data we have, you say one thing, the radar printout says another. You were confused, and you contradicted the computer's instructions. Now, let's talk about that for a minute. It's accepted practice that if it's your word against the computer, the computer has precedence. That's ludicrous. How can you give the computer precedence when you can't even believe what it's saying? Ask the pilots. E even the even the TCAS system makes mistakes sometimes. I warned you, Mr. Wyatt. I warned you! We have to trust the technology. You gave the pilot improper instructions. Is that true or not true? You were warned. Is it true or not true? Happen. You were warned! Did you give the pilot improper instructions? This is the scope that Drake used. He's finishing up a diagnostic check on it right now. Test pattern looks OK. Character generator functions. Character gen? How old is this scope? Older than you. We're in transition. We're due for new equipment in two years. So they say. I've hooked into a sector for the last five hours. This is the same traffic Drake had yesterday. Seems to be functioning fine. How long do you want me to stay on? Five hours isn't long enough. Hook up a video, monitor to it, and record it. Drake says he reported two unsatisfactory condition reports on this scope. I want to see them. All the maintenance records, too. Did anybody touch this scope last night? I run the department. Nobody touched it. Let me know what happens. What's Henry Drake's status here? Oh, I'm sure he'd like to have his job back. He's not going to get it, though. i got to find something else for him to do. Union rules. That glitch he talked about, the data disappearing from the screen. That ever happened here before? Not to my knowledge. I'll go through the reports and check. Did you see the radar data? Yeah, but that doesn't prove him wrong. Missing data is not going to show up on a radar report. We need the black box to show if there's a problem with the avionics. How long has Drake worked here? 20 years. Most of my controllers burn out after 10, move upstairs into management. But uh, Henry, well, <laughs> you know. Henry Drake's not exactly what you call management material. 
Now, this equipment is what? 1960s military? 1950s. My dad says you guys had more sophisticated equipment back when you were in the Navy. There's nothing wrong with the technology, John. We may have a few more airplanes in the sky, but that's not the system's fault. It works. Yeah, Barbara, is he there? Yeah, sure, I'll hold. Hey, what'd you find out? Drake's scope checked out. Really? How about those reports he filed? They weren't there. What do you mean they weren't there? They weren't there. The FAA has no record of any unsatisfactory reports being filed or any service on the scope in the last two months. That's weird. Can we check the DC off? It's not there. But I did find out something interesting. What? There were five power outages in the facility. Blackouts. Mm -hmm. Caused by software glitch, power interruption, stuck computer key. That one knocked them out for 15 minutes. It's a falling out of that helicopter. Flowers from the families of the victims. That's as close as they could get. I saw Catherine a couple months ago. I thought you guys broke up. Yeah, we did. But I was in Atlanta, so I called her. We got together a couple times. It was great. I don't know why. Maybe because there was no pressure on us or something. But it's really, really nice. I called her a couple times when I got back to DC, but she never called me back. Hey, Mr. Stanley. supposed to talk to you. I just want to talk to you. Hey, you want this incident reported? It's not going to help you out. Why won't anybody listen to me? I'm not crazy. I know what I saw. That plane was not on my scope. Did you find the unsatisfactory condition reports? I they weren't there. No, I found those reports. Well, they weren't there. They buried them. Who? Oh, they'll bury reports. They'll do whatever they Tell want. Tell me something. How come out of 35 unsatisfactory condition reports filed in the last couple years, you filed 32 of them? Because I speak up? Well, just because you speak up doesn't mean anyone's going to believe you. Listen, could I look you in the eye like this if I killed all those people? Good night, Mr. Tree. John! Yeah? We found the black box! Now you can see the PDO approaching in the computer recreation. The crew is getting impatient. The controller is telling the global pilot to maintain. TCAS is telling him to descend. The global pilot is receiving conflicting commands. Center, we have traffic somewhere. TCAS is telling us to descend. Negative 1025, do not descend. Maintain flight level 260. Again, the controller gives him the wrong command. The PDO cargo is now at 25 and climbing directly into the path of the global. Center, we're not on visual. Where's the traffic? I don't see him. Where's PDO? The controller was keyed upon his mic. He seems irritated, confused. He can't find PDO. Or it's not on his screen. Or it's not on his screen. What we do know from the data is that the PDO cargo is almost at 26,000 feet. Now, somehow, the controller realizes his mistake and quickly tries to descend global. Global 1025, traffic alert. Descend immediately to flight level 210. 1025, expedite descent. Here he's giving the right commands to global. But it's too late. Traffic descent. We have impact. What the hell is that? Right. What we got here? We're hit, man. Traffic. We are hit. The next segment of this tape is the cockpit recording after the collision. This isn't easy to listen to. Center, Mayday! Mayday! We're going down! We're going down! This is Global 1025! We're going to the cabin! Flight attendants, resume crash positions. The cam hold it. Left rudder, left rudder. We're losing hydraulic fire. Engine 2, pull the bottles. Hang on, man! Pull it up! Pull it up! Emergency bullets! Kill! Got him, kid! Oh, wow. Score it. Good one. Where are you going? Going home to 
and my kids. Come on, one more. Uh, Tim wants you to stay. Oh, no, I don't. See ya. <laughs> Henry, I was, I was gonna call you. Yeah, but you've been so busy. Don't do that to me. Sorry, but under the circumstances, I think maybe an ounce of pity might be appropriate. Come on, Karen, I'm drowning out here. It's ridiculous. There's no conspiracy. Everybody is just trying to cover their own ass. Karen, what do you think a conspiracy is? God, I filed a complaint. I fight for the union. I put my ass in the line for everybody else. And who comes to my defense? Everybody is suffering. What did you guys say to the NTSB? Who? Lafia, Mac, Connors, you. I know you guys all talked. What did you say? Oh, this is great. You don't remember. Don't get sarcastic with me, Henry. You know we're not supposed to talk about what we said. Karen, it's me, for God's uh, sake. I went, I went through your divorce. I know your children. Henry, what do you want me to do, lie? Whatever happened on your scope, I didn't see it. But you know that what I'm talking about could have happened? Karen, Karen, listen, I know, I know it's hard for you to complain, but you've got to speak up now. Those guys, they're, they're not going to do it, but you're not them. You've got to speak up and tell people about the system. Henry, I... I'm not you. We can't keep the black box findings from the press. We have to release that information. I agree. I don't have a problem with that. I'll schedule a press conference in two days. Excuse me, but if you release this tape to the press, then the whole world's gonna think that Henry Drake is responsible for the crash of 1025. Let's not kid ourselves here. These investigations are now public trials. Played out in the media, we release these findings. He's guilty. John, we've listened to all the tapes, we've analyzed all the data that we have, we've interviewed and re-interviewed anyone who was even remotely attached to the crash. Now, yes, the pilot will share some responsibility, but cold hard fact is, Henry Drake did not see the cargo plane. True, but he says that it wasn't there on his scope. How does that prove he's innocent? How does that prove he's guilty? You're looking to find some fault with the system. No, I'm not looking to find look, any. If there is even the slightest hint of a remote possibility that there's something wrong with the air traffic control system, there will be international repercussions. Yes, but what if there is something wrong with the system? What if it is flawed? And if that flaw still exists, what are we going to do about it? Ignore it? Wait for it to happen again? Of course not. Then tell me how a guy with a fairly spotless record, over 20 years of experience as a controller, puts two planes together. His spotless record and his experience are completely irrelevant. All right. What about the unsatisfactory condition reports you filed? John, we've been over this before. They aren't there. I looked for him myself. So he's lying. We're not making a value judgment against this guy's character. Sure we are. That's exactly what we're doing. If those reports don't exist, then, then Drake is a liar. Have we double-checked the maintenance logs? Double-checked and triple-checked. There have been no problems reported with that scope for the last several months. <sighs> Does anybody else have a bad feeling about this? John, I want to get to the truth of this matter as much as you do, as much as anybody. How many blackouts did your facility have last year? We've had occasional power failures. We installed new yeah. software, yeah, new yeah, equipment. Yeah, yeah, but how many blackouts? Five. We have a backup system. And what happens if that backup system goes down? It doesn't. If, if it did. John, this has absolutely nothing to do with what happened to Henry Drake's scope. Five blackouts. Now, is that how many really happened, or is that just how many gets reported? If a power interruption duration is less than one minute, no report is filed. Why not? Because it's not required by federal air regulations, John. I do not make the rules. Why does it take something like this to happen before the rules get changed? People, people die. John, you got a call. You need to go to the crash site right away. Believe it or not, we're almost two miles from the crash site. 
couple of hikers found the bodies early this morning. We found the last six remaining bodies in this general area here. Where was Catherine Farmell's body found? I believe she was over here in this clearing. Who, uh, who was this she was with? Uh, 144, that would be uh, Paulette Oster. She was a uh, little five-year-old girl. Her mother's body was already recovered, wasn't it? Yes, sir. You know, strangest thing, her mother's body wasn't found anywhere in this area. We uh, were pretty sure that she was holding on to the little girl when the plane crashed. Excuse me, sir, if you don't mind me asking, did you, well, did you know this woman somehow? Yeah. Listen, why don't you, uh, why don't you just take your time here, and if you need me, I'll be back at the truck. You okay? Oh, yeah. You know, you do this for 10 years. You just walk by these little flags. It's just body. It's not a life. It's, uh, it's a little different when you know the person. You guys want kids, Paul? Yeah, we've talked about it. <sighs> Catherine wanted kids. She wasn't sure when, but she knew she wanted them. <sighs> I need to uh, go home, take a couple days off. I promised Catherine's mom I'd bring her body back home to DC. <sighs> this isn't right. Right. John? Hey, Lori. Can we talk? It's about the best I can do. I haven't been home since I left for Chicago. Thanks. I spoke to Catherine's mom yesterday. No, it really meant a lot to her that you could bring Catherine's body back. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm still a little confused. About what? About why she was on that flight. I know that DC wasn't on her route since she moved to Atlanta. I thought that maybe she was coming home to visit her mom, but that wasn't it. I thought she was coming here to see you. Me? There's something I have to tell you. It was my fault. I was with Catherine in L.A. I, I switched flights with her, and she took my route. I killed her. It should have been me. No. No, no, don't, don't say that. It shouldn't, shouldn't have been anyone. No, I have to go. Wait, why does she want to see me? It doesn't matter anymore. John, Mark, I have in my possession two tickets to the Redskins game. If you're interested, call me, okay? Hi, John. It's your mom. Hi, Mom. I know you're busy. Call me back when you have a chance. Dad and I are trying to make plans for Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah. I love you. Bye. Hi, it's Catherine. Um, I'm calling from LAX, and I, uh, I have to see you. Uh, I have something I have to talk to you about, and I just, I want to talk to you about it in person. I'm coming into D.C. tonight. Uh, I know you're in town. I called your office. I, I hope that was okay. I need to see you, John. Would you please be there for me? Tell me why she was coming to see me. I don't know. Yes, you do. Come on. Why did she want to see me? It doesn't matter. Why did she want to see me? It doesn't matter. It matters to me. Lori, come on. Please, just... Tell me. She was pregnant. She loved you, John. She always loved you. Didn't you know that? John? John? Hi, 
it's Catherine. Um, I'm calling from LAX, and I, uh, I have to see you. Uh, I have something I have to talk to you about, and I just, I want to talk to you about it in person. I'm coming into D.C. tonight. Uh, I know you're in town. I called your office. I, I hope that was okay. I need to see you, John. Would you please be there for me? I used to work in maintenance. And, well, technically, I'm not a controller just yet. I'm still trainee. When do you start? In about an hour. A little nervous, huh? <laughs> I, I should actually get back out there. Did you ever service Henry Drake's scope? Uh, any scope that came down to us was just a number. We checked it, repaired it if it needed repair, and uh, logged it in the book. This book, right? Yes, sir. When you service a scope, it's logged into this, right? Yes, sir. Tell me, did anyone ever ask you not to log something or to take something out? No, sir. Is it possible that a data block can disappear from a radar screen? Uh, it could. How? The scope could overheat, maybe. That could cause the character generator to malfunction. That could cause the display to malfunction. Could I, could I go now? How would we cause the scope to overheat? Just turn off the fan. Can I go now, please? Yeah. Pushing 10, you nervous? No, no, I just dropped my pen. Mm. Let me tell you a secret, and don't tell anybody here. My first week on the scopes, puked my guts out for the whole week. Oh, man. Are you kidding me? This is a true story. Lighten up, rookie. You got an easy shift. Light traffic, no pressure. Well, what do you ask you about? Who? Who? The NTSB. We're just upstairs. It's nothing, man. It's just uh, maintenance stuff. Rock steady. You're gonna do fine. Are you nervous about the job, or did something happen? I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not nervous. Confidence, man. That's what this job is all about. You get into a rhythm, and you're in control. You're in control. No, you're in control. I'm in control. I'm in control. That's in right. Control. See you on the floor. I'm in control. I am in control. I'm in control. I'm in control. Make six copies of these arrival route maps and then distribute them to the appropriate control stations. And then come back. Don't you use the same maps every week? Yes. Why not make 600 copies and then you don't have to make copies every week, right? Because I don't do it that way. Consider yourself lucky to even have this job. United 723 Midwest Center. Resume normal speed. Descend and maintain flight level 280. Hey, rookie, the pilots aren't dogs. Loosen up. <laughs> Southwest 116, turn left, heading 280. Vector for traffic, expect direct Mason City. Traffic at your 2 o'clock, 15 miles. Beautiful, look at that separation. OK, let's hear it for the rookie. Own coffee from now on. Tri-State 723. Maintain maximum forward. Southwest Southwest 116, contact Midwest Center 123.4. Watch your sequencing and separation, man. You can get yourself cornered. Where? Right there, left the Tri-State. You got two planes coming into each other in about three minutes. Tri-State. Don't panic. Just talk to them and put them somewhere. Tri-State 723, this is Midwest Center. Turn left, heading 210. Reduce speed to 250 knots. Continental 301 traffic, 10 o'clock, one mile northbound.
How you doing? Pretty good. Atlantic 234, traffic 11 o'clock, 20 miles east. What the hell is this? I'm going down. Backup is down. Stop backup radios. Radio is down. What the hell is going on? You got a blackout. Find a phone. That's right, St. Louis. Can you see him? No. What do I do? Keep the picture in your head, call the positions international. Keep it in my head, I got ten planes. Just get another phone. I got two of them about to crash in two minutes. And I got four. I'm sorry, man. I can't help you right now. Just get to a phone, any phone, have Chicago Tower take over your airspace. William's got the number. What? What's the number for the Chicago Air Tower? Five 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 two three two zero. Do you see it? There's a 22,000 at about 120 miles east. Where's your another phone? Try downstairs. Left altitude known, light level two. Pick up the traffic from center, ground stop everything. International. This is 10 Connors, Midwest Center. I got a tri state. 723 squad, 7127, climbing eastbound. We're about three miles east of the airport. I got a Pan Atlantic 234 squad, 1017. Uh, eastbound, climbing 15 for 25, in its path. It's been a good minute and a half. I just hope they can see each other. I'm trying to find them. What frequency are they on? Oh, uh, 118.55. 5-5. Pan Atlantic 234, this is Chicago International. Do you read? Pan Atlantic 234. Not on that frequency. They're talking to somebody. I just don't know Kids, who. Do you see it? I don't see it. It's gotta be there. It's gotta be there. I see a vector on the west. Let me talk to somebody else. American, you have traffic on your right. Could be Tri-State 723. You have visual? Well, they're flying straight into traffic. You have a frequency form? Got it. Tri-State 723, this is Chicago International, taking over your airspace. You have traffic at your altitude. A jet eastbound at 20,000. Descend immediately. Descend immediately. Descend. Please. Pan Atlantic, don't descend with him. Come on. Come on. Yes. Yes, we got him. We got him separated. You're OK, Midwest Center. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Are you all done now? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Attention all aircraft, ground stop still in effect. Delays to metered airports are expected.
All radar and communications were down for almost five minutes. No accidents or near mid-air collisions were reported. Frank Wyatt, facility manager of Midwest Center, responded. It was tense. There's no oh, question about there that. there he is. Point hey, there, Frankie, come on. Uh, come on. Uh, come on. Uh, tell him, Frankie. Tell him like it is. Very important air traffic control facility. The system worked. The system worked because we have well-designed contingency plans. And we have well-trained, highly skilled professional air traffic that controllers. Would be us? <laughs> Gentlemen, yes. No problem to the flying public. We continue. Does Kennedy know about the blackout at the facility today? To ensure the smooth flow well, yes, it is urgent. Actually, I need to speak to him before his press conference. Can you make that happen? Did cause Thank you. Chicago International, however, and this is a point I want to emphasize: at no time was public safety compromised. This was essentially a non-event. The hell is he talking about? It was chaos. They had planes flying with no communication or radar for four minutes. But do they know what caused it? No. But I'm gonna find out. Kim, bring Henry Drake back in. They're gonna nail him for 1025 in two hours, and I want to talk to him again first. Paul, mm -hmm. get me a printout. Every blackout reported at Midwest. In fact, every center in Tracon in the country. Paul Wyatt. No. He's the facility manager. I know who he is, Kim. Go outside the agency. Get it from NASA, the Aviation Reporting Systems Control Base. I want to know about any and all blackouts from now on. What the hell happened out there? It could be a commercial power failure. Could be a switching mechanism. I may need to swap a circuit breaker. I don't know yet. I cannot manage a system that I have to piecemeal together with paper clips and chewing gum. We'll fix the problem. And then what? Sir, you're busy. I think you should look at this right away. According to FAA facility manager Wyatt, there was no correlation between today's blackout and the global 1025 mid-air collision three weeks ago, which claimed 185 lives. FAA officials did not disclose the cause of today's blackout. National Transportation Board Director Dr. William Kennedy has scheduled a press conference to address recent findings in the crash of global 1025. Though officials insist that the cause of the crash is still under investigation, there are unconfirmed reports that the NTSB will find that controller error was ultimately responsible for the mid-air disaster. Oh, come on, what do I have to do? They were there, the NTSB. They saw the blackout. Henry, you're scaring the kids. Confirm what investigators have suspected since the crash. Federal officials today indicated that data from the flight recorder clearly established that Henry Drake, the Midwest Center air traffic controller, failed to communicate the correct flight. Hello? Karen, this is Harold. Where's Henry? Why? If you hear from him at all, let me know. We got a problem. A big problem. What? Always, always, always question authority. You see this, they lie, and they lie, and then they lie to cover the lies. Girls, can you go play in the other room for a minute? Henry. What were you doing in the basement? Henry, were you in the basement this afternoon before the blackout? Yeah. I was in the basement before the power went out. Why? I was looking for something. Behind the power supply unit? I was looking for something in the room, then somebody came in and I, I hid behind the power supply unit. And then the power went out, but I didn't touch anything. Why did you hide behind the power supply unit? Because I know how people are, Karen. Why are you attacking Henry, me? Henry, they've got a security camera in the power supply room. You're on the tape. Well, so? They've got me on tape. I work there, don't I? Girls. Henry. That was Harold on the phone. They're looking for you. That's, that's management. They're trying to intimidate no, you because they know that is. we're Henry, friends. Just be and quiet. Wait a minute. They couldn't, poss they couldn't possibly think that this is intentional. They think that I caused the blackout? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. They called the FBI. Oh, God. The FBI, they call the FBI for me. I've got to go. Oh, my Just God. Just call them and you explain it to them. Or you I can't it explain. Me. I can't explain. I've done that. Nobody is going to help me now. Nobody.
Unbelievable. What? Blackouts in the national database. And this is just for this year. Look at the times on some of these. Minute and a half, three minutes, four minutes. Are you ready for this? I just spoke with Midwest. They think that Henry Drake is responsible for the blackout today. What? How? They caught him on security tape near the power supply. What the hell was he doing? I don't know. Well, did anybody ask him? They can. He's gone. I need more time. I am not canceling this press conference, John. What is it you expect to find? Last year, there were over 1,500 outages across the country. I just experienced one today. Now, how is it that this facility is so damn sure that one little three-second glitch didn't happen? I've got two unsatisfactory condition reports that no one seems to be able to find. I've got a lab technician who used to work at that facility who's telling me that he's seen a data block disappear from a scope. He's seen it happen. Now, why are we rushing to blame 185 deaths on one guy when we're not sure? You're not sure. Yes, and I'm the lead investigator of this case, sir. Let me tell you something, John. I speak to the American public, I speak to the US Congress, and today I spoke to the President of the United States. Now, if you expect me to publicly indict the air traffic control system based on a couple of missing documents and one ex-lab technician, you are very wrong. We had a deal, John. I would allow you to stay on this case if you could handle it professionally, emotionally. If you can't, then I will take you off. Do you understand me? Yes, sir. With me tonight is Frank Wyatt, the facility manager at Midwest Center. Uh, from the Federal Bureau of Investigation, Jim Travis and Stephen Royer from the FAA. Now, our efforts have focused on communication between the air traffic controller at Midwest Center and the global pilot. Voice communication, black box data have confirmed that serious errors in judgment were committed by the air traffic controller who was in contact with Global 1025 and the PDO cargo jet. As to any findings that the air traffic control system itself was compromised or deficient in any way, the NTSB has been unable to make that determination. Uh, Mr. Wyatt and Mr. Royer will answer questions regarding that. Mr. Wyatt, were there other power outages at the facility that may have been caused by Henry Drake? Uh, at this time, we have no idea. Mr. Travis from the FBI Four, will now make a statement. Five, six. As of 5 p.m. tonight, the FBI has launched a nationwide search for Henry Drake. 57, 58. He is wanted for questioning in regards to the crash of Global 1025 as well as the blackout which occurred today at the Midwest facility. We are notifying all local law enforcement agencies to assist us in his apprehension. Do you see this as an act of revenge by Henry Drake? That's certainly possible, though we can't comment on his motives until we question him. Is there any speculation that the crash of 1025 was not an accident, but somehow a deliberate act? We can't speculate right now, but we're certainly looking into that possibility. Look at this. This is a tape of the traffic we plugged into yesterday. The scope overheated for four hours. Now keep your eye on this. That is a tri-state jet 624, and now it's at 10,000 feet. It disappeared. Now watch. It's not there. It's not there. It's not there. It's not there. Boom. There it is. Now it's at 15,000 feet. That's exactly what Drake said happened to his scope. Did we check the fan on Drake's scope? Mm -hmm. It functioned. I need your help. I told you yesterday, man, I quit that place. A lot of pressure around there lately, huh? Yeah, a little bit. What else? Look, I'm paying someone by the hour to ask those questions. Listen, there's a guy out there that everyone thinks may have killed 185 people. And maybe he did. But if he didn't, do you want that on your conscience? <laughs> Give me a break, man. As the intensive manhunt for Henry Drake increases, more questions arise. The unthinkable. Could Henry Drake have deliberately caused the crash of 1025? Who is Henry Drake? Kicked off the student council at Dunbar High School, fellow students recall the straight-A nerd as hot-headed and argumentative. 
fellow chess club member Tom Brown says he was a stickler for details and an avid scientist. Bet you didn't think you'd be back down here so quick, huh? I worked down here. We were afraid to take this stuff apart. The connections were so old. That's a relic, huh? We're the number one buyer of vacuum tubes in the world. I think we're the only buyer of vacuum tubes in the world. I can never figure out why they haven't tried to update the system. Oh, they tried. They gave an outside company a contract to redesign the software. Three billion dollars later, and they still hadn't come up with anything better. They just scrapped the project. They came up with nothing? Zip. Three billion dollars. Hey, look at this. Look. See this part right here? There's, there's soot uh -huh. on the connections from the wires to the fan. These are all old parts, right? Yeah, except for this right here. The fan. It's too clean. This is a new part. How do we find out when it was replaced? Every part is a serial number. Every serial number's got to be logged in the maintenance logbook. You mind if I hang on to this for a while? No, not at all. Thanks. I know I'm just one of many overdressed strangers asking you where Mr. Drake is right now, correct? And if you don't know where he is or you're lying about it, then I'll be honest with you, there's nothing I can do about it. I'm not a cop or the FBI or the FAA. All I want to know is what happened to 1025. So, if and when you do speak to Mr. Drake, will you please tell him that I am his only hope? It sounds corny, but uh, he'll know what it means. Oh, Miss Garfield, this is a maintenance log from the Midwest Center. Would you do an analysis on it as soon as you can? An analysis? What mm -hmm. are you looking for? I don't know. Anything out of the ordinary? John, it was human error. You know it. Just do it. Thank you. John, yeah. Midwest Center has no record of this. And we don't know when it was installed? How about when it was shipped from the manufacturer? They don't know. Are you telling me that no one at Midwest Center has any record of this part at all? That doesn't sound like human error to me. Yeah, get me Frank Wyatt, please. I don't want to have the discussion anymore. I'm sick and tired of it. I know what you're going to say anyway. All I'm saying is you can't say the 94 Bulls could beat the 83 Celtics or the 88 Lakers. It was a different game back then. So what? That's not my fault. I'm not saying it's your fault. Why are you taking it so personally? Yeah. Who's it? Oh, yeah, hang on. Karen, it's for you. It's some guy. He's going after that pension, baby. You know it. <laughs> it's giving me a headache. Careful. Hello? Karen, it's me. Henry. Where are you? I'm just going to ask you to do one thing, OK? Karen, would you just do this one thing for me? Do not go to work at the facility on Wednesday. And don't fly. What are you saying? Just do what I'm telling you to do. Do not fly or go to work at the facility on Wednesday. Listen, they want to help you. Tag that and get a copy to Paul Roth. As soon as you can. Well, Thanks. I think Henry's gonna do something. Why? I don't know what, but he called me and told me not to go near the facility or fly on Wednesday. This this Wednesday? Two days from now. Did you say why? No. That's the day before Thanksgiving. Excuse me. He told her not to fly or go to the facility. Now, I would take that as a serious threat. You don't know Henry Drake like I hey, do. He's all tough. You were the one that accused him of shutting down the system. He doesn't work here anymore. As long as he's out there and not in here, well, he's not a threat. Is there any way that he could get in here? How? The facility's guarded 24 hours a day. We've changed the security codes. How can he get in? We're meeting with the FBI. We are taking this seriously. You handle the NTSB investigation, John. We'll worry about Henry Drake. Okay. All right, let's get started.
nothing unusual about any of the entries, except for two. This entry was made three months ago, August 8th. Scope service, checked out a display, results passed. Now, everything looks normal to the naked eye. Writing's the same, ink's the same. The scope ID number is 5321. But under infrared, the entry looks like this. Everything still looks the same except for the scope ID number. 5321 is now 58273. The three's been altered to look like an eight, the one to a seven, and somebody's added a three. Five, three, two, one. That was Drake's scope. And the other entry? Same complaint, same service, also passed. Keep that log secure. John, you were right. I knew you'd find it. Thanks, Miss Garfield. In traffic tomorrow if you're thinking of busting me. Draft. Want another one? I'm good, thanks. Just one. What do you want to talk about now? Is there a question you have not asked me? Yeah. Who altered the two entries in the maintenance log book? Can't help you on that one. Well, I think you can. And I'm not gonna leave till you do. Thanks. Listen to me. I've cooperated with you. I have answered your questions. You don't disrespect me by coming in here and accusing me of something I know nothing about. Were they changed before or after the crash? I don't know what the hell you're talking about. <sighs> you guys. You guys think they're just blips on a screen, don't you? You don't know what I think. There is nothing you or I can ever do to bring those people back. Were they changed before or after the crash? How would I know anything about entries in the program log? Because you're the supervisor. Only you and the lab technician have access to it. Then you should talk to the lab technician. Well, I just did. I already know you did it. I just don't know why. I got 30 years on this job. I tell somebody below me to do something, they do it. Somebody above me tells me to do something, I do it. That's the way it works, man. How come you don't understand that? Who told you to change the log? Frank Wyatt, please, it's John Dantley calling. I, yes, I would. Would you please tell him to meet me tomorrow afternoon at the crash site? It's urgent. Thank you. entire system. Perf. Beg your pardon? High energy radio frequency. They use something like it in the Gulf War. It shuts down communications, radar, fries everything.
name? Jim Hale. ID? Maintenance from International? Yes, sir. You know where to park? Sure do. All right, then. Jim Hale from International. OK. Yeah, we got you here. If you could just sign in for me, please. Yes, ma'am. How's Jenny? Jenny Glass? Well, she's fine. Yeah, she works weekends now. Will you tell her I said hi? I sure will. You know the code, right? Uh, no, actually, you know, they changed it after the last time I was here, I think. Do you mind? Sure, no problem. So what is it you wanted me to see, John? You ever been to a crash site before? No. Quite a smell, isn't it? Each crash site has a very unique smell. You can't get rid of it. It gets on you. Your clothes, your shoes. I've never gotten used to it. The 757 didn't explode on impact. The tail section tore off from the sheer force of the fall but it didn't explode. Just spiral down My God. for two minutes. Everyone was still strapped in and alive until it hit the ground and for two minutes. Can you imagine what those two minutes must have been like for those passengers? No. No, I can't, John. See this little fan? It's, it's part of a scope. It has one function only, to cool the unit. See what happened the night of the crash? A little wire connected to the fan arced. The fan stopped working. And that caused the character generator to overheat, so the scope blacked out. When the scope blacked out, the data block vanished, which caused the controller to give the wrong information to the pilot, which caused the two planes to fly into each other and kill 185 people, including a woman I knew and loved. Because of this, little part. You recognize it? It's from Henry Drake's scope. It was replaced the night of the crash. Of course, it should have been replaced months ago when Drake said, hey, there's something wrong with my scope, but nobody's gonna listen to a guy like that. But after the crash, somebody listened and replaced this part and destroyed the unsatisfactory reports he filed. And nothing was said to the NTSB. Nothing was said when an innocent man was blamed. Nothing was said when 185 people were killed. Wait a minute. Do you think that if I knew that this would happen, that I would allow it to happen? But you did allow it to happen. I did not know, John. You don't understand. Well, tell me. Tell me what I don't understand. Every day, every single day, I am responsible for keeping thousands of planes in the sky. That's my job. People spend longer than 20 minutes on the tarmac in Chicago, John. I hear about it. But I only have so much controlled airspace. So many controllers, so many scopes, so many technicians and equipment, that breaks down. I have to keep the planes running on time with a system that I'm just trying to keep afloat. I know that that's not right. We make do with what we have. But if it's not right, 
Then why do you protect it? Because it's what we do. Yeah, Bill Kennedy, please. It's John Dantley calling. Yeah, I'll hold. I don't care what time it is. Do it. Just do it. I want agents spread out in a two-mile radius of the facility. Go, go, go! Danley, go on inside. They're expecting you. Thanks. I say we do what he says. We're running out of time, gentlemen. What did the Department of Transportation say? I spoke to the secretary an hour ago. It's our call. We shut the Midwest Center down. That means we ground the planes. The day before Thanksgiving, we are going to ground the plane? Chaos. We already have it. We got two-hour delays. People are canceling flights. Phone lines are overloaded. Airports are a mess. Ground the planes. Think of our priorities here. I understand your instinct to be cautious. It's mine, too. But the threat is not specific enough. How much more specific can he be? He said, ground the planes in an hour, or I'll shut this system down. How? If you can't get inside the building, hell, I couldn't get inside the building. You can't do it outside the building. We got built-in EMI shielding that blocks frequencies, what, Frank? Up to 10 gigahertz? Radar's off-site and heavily guarded. So you put your wife on a plane right now? That's not the issue. That is the issue. Unless Henry Drake is some kind of a genius, I cannot believe this man can shut the system down. I cannot, in good conscience, stop 15 million people from traveling today. I can't do it. He is a genius, Royer. Ground the planes. Hello? John, I think you better take this. Hello? I'm shutting it down. You have five minutes. He's here. We've got five minutes. Check the microwave links upstairs on the roof. Got it. Anybody listening to me now? Yeah, we're listening. We're all listening. Never shut it down, though, have they? What are you doing? I shut it down myself. You see this? I can fry this whole system. You'd never get it back up after ground the planes for a week. Uh huh. And and what about the ones up there right now? Huh? What happens to them? I can't think about them. Well, think about it. Henry, you want more people to die? How many more innocent people have to die? 500? 1,000? 2,000? No, no, don't come any closer. Stay right where you are. Oh, well, what, you're gonna kill yourself and me? For, for what? You're innocent. I proved it. You're lying. There is a flaw in the system. We found it. And I, I promise you, I will do everything within my power to fix it. It can't be fixed. Maybe not, but, but I can at least try. And I, I need your help. Henry, don't let those 185 people die in vain. Make their lives count for something. I, I didn't. Make their families think that, that, that something decent can come out of all of this. I, d I didn't. Don't take that away from them. Or me. I didn't kill my 
those people. I didn't kill those people. I know. I just, I didn't kill them. I didn't kill them. I didn't kill those people. <laughs> I know. I'll call you in a couple of days. All right. You have a good Thanksgiving. Me too. We'll make a difference on this one, right? I hope so. Yeah, we will. Arriving passenger Jim Brecker, please meet your party at the lower level carousel number one. Passenger Jim Brecker, please meet your party at the lower level carousel number one. Passenger Jim Brecker, please meet your party at the lower level carousel number one. Passenger Jim Brecker, please meet your party at the lower level carousel number one. Passenger Jim Brecker, please meet your party at the lower level carousel number one. Passenger Jim Brecker, please meet your party at the lower level carousel number one. Delta 251, left turn back pattern. Barrick 472, pass behind, follow through the traffic. Delta 1526, left turn back pattern. Delta 